Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Microsoft Project Made Easy. In this series of videos, we are looking at different aspects of Microsoft Project. So if you haven't already subscribed, if you click the subscribe button and check under the playlist that I have for MS Project, you'll find a whole array of other videos right from the very basics up to a little bit more advanced topics. And today's is a little bit more advanced in the fact that we're talking about resources and behaviors and how Microsoft Project does things. If you don't really understand how it does things, it can be very confusing, uh, especially when you start adding resources and costs uh, to a schedule as to why it's behaving a certain way. So in particular today, we're gonna to be looking at effort-driven scheduling, and we're gonna be looking at the combination of units, um, duration, and work, and how they interact, and how Microsoft Project has certain uh, restrictions on it and how you can adjust the restrictions um, to work uh, however you want pretty much. Uh, so let's just take a quick look. I have this uh, schedule in front of me. In a previous video I talked about uh, setting up uh, a timeline and showing milestones so that's why that's there but I'm just going to move that a little bit out of the way. I'll put some links to the videos as well below in the descriptions. Uh, so we have this construction project that we have and we've got a bunch of stuff assigned to it we've got resources added to it and you notice here we have um, clear site and grubbing and so we're basically we're going to clear out the site remove all the bushes and everything uh, trees etc and uh, we have the activity and you'll notice that actually I'll put it where you'll probably know it normally be which would be the entry view and you probably see you know the task names duration start finish and if you pull the bar you'll see predecessors if you inserted the resources uh, column you'd see that but maybe I'll just delete that for now we don't need it there and it's not del it's just deleted from view it's not deleted from the program and resource names. Okay, so we've got a bunch of resources already applied. Uh, so I'll pull that in a little bit. I'm going to hone in on this clear site and grubbing. And so we have 10 days. And so this is the duration that is expected for this to take. And we've assigned labors. I don't know how much labors, but let's take a look. If I go up to my resource tab, I can see assign resources box. Very handy way of doing this. Uh, especially when you're assigning resources and I go through this in a previous video on how to assign resources and we have 100% well 100% really means we've got one resource applied and we would have created this resource the laborers in the resource sheet so if I slide to the left I can see the resource sheet and I've got a bunch created and I have laborers over here I put a maximum of 500%, so that means I could assign up to five laborers without it telling me I've over allocated them. And I'll talk about that in another video, but uh, we have $50 an hour that we've assigned. So every time this laborer works an hour, we're supposed to be paying them $50. Depending what jurisdiction you're in, that might seem like a lot or that might seem like a little. I'm in Toronto, Canada, so that's probably slightly on the low side, to be honest. But I wanted to pick a number uh, that's a nice, uh, even number that we could sort of look at and calculate in our heads. So $50 is pretty good that way. And, you know, this could be the burdened rate. So for things like holidays and government uh, employment insurances and WSIB, something like safety uh, protections, etc. So that, that's why that can be a differing number from the money that's actually paid out. And it depends if it's union or non-union. Okay, so I'm sliding back and I'm going to go back to the Gantt chart. Uh, and we're going to look at that activity, 10 days. And so what effort-driven scheduling means in Microsoft Project, it's really looking at, well, if how, ma how many units, so laborers would be units, how many units do I have? Right now, I've assigned 100% to this, and at $50 an hour for them working, uh, for that one laborer working 10 days, that works out to $4,000. So if you do the math on that, you have $50 an hour. We're assuming we've set it up standard eight hour day. Uh, eight times 50, that's $400 a day. $400 times 10, that gives us $4,000. Now, if I say that I want, oh, let's add a second labor to this. Well, watch what happens. So if I put this at 
watch what's going to happen to the 10 days. So if I click out of that, it changed this to five days. So it went from 10 days to five days. It did not change the cost. So the cost remained fixed. And what we did was it adjusted when we changed the units, it changed the amount of days. So you think about that. Well, if I had a long trench that I'm digging and I had one labor, it's going to take 10 days. Okay, so then that should only take five days. That's how Microsoft Project calculates that. It calculates it very linearly. But that might not be the reality in the real world, right? Like if I say, all right, for that trench, we're going to make it four laborers. Uh, well, let's get that up to four. Four laborers, that's going to make that two and a half days. So it cuts it in half again. Okay, but it didn't change my cost because I've got four laborers for two and a half days. So essentially my total um, work is the same. It's remaining the same. So the total hours of work is remaining the same. So work is in this case hours. And so our cost does not change. But in reality, you know, at what point does that not make sense? I could say, all right, well, we got four laborers on there. Let's make it eight laborers. And eight laborers make it one and a quarter days. And then if I've got eight laborers, one and a quarter days, maybe I say 16 laborers and now it's five hours. It gets ridiculous, right? So uh, the basic premise with Microsoft Project is it's effort-driven scheduling. Now, if I, if I go back to 200% here, right? And now it's back to five days. Well, maybe if I say, you know what? I don't think two laborers is going to get this done in five days. I could always um, say, well, you know what? We do want 400%, but, and it's going to change it to two and a half. Uh, oops, I didn't click out of there. That's why 400% click there. It's going to make it two and a half. You know what? I want it to be five days, but now watch what that'll do to the cost. So I could go to the five days and I could type in five, oops, and five, make that five days. And that's going to, if I go back up here, that's going to double my cost. So now I'm at $8,000. Well, that's realistic if that's what you're thinking, right? Maybe you made a mistake in your initial application of the resources. So that's something to make note of with Microsoft Project. Your initial assignment. So if the first time I assign a resource, if I assign two, it won't change the duration. But if I adjust it after I've entered it and I put either more resources or I take some off, it's going to change your duration. And if you're not watching for that, you'll later on, what happened? Why did that change to two and a half days? I didn't realize it would do that. Then that'll cause some ripple effect problems. If you know how it works, as soon as you're doing it, you can kind of watch it and see how it's playing out and determine is this what we really want here? So perhaps maybe I will go back here and I'm going to change this down to, um, we had one originally and I'm going to change this to one and I'm going to change this to 10 days. And now we should be back to where we started. So we've got 10 days and we're at $4,000. Um, now another screen that I wanted to sort of illustrate um, this a little bit better and maybe this time we'll look at site trailer with two days. So maybe we'll look at site trailer with two days here. Um, I'm going to take us to, if you click on the square icon box, the way I like to switch between screens, square icon box here, just click it, right click with your mouse or with your touchpad, the right button. And uh, I'm going to go to where it says usage. So that's task usage. And you notice there's a column here that's got work. Well, here where we've got work, that's um, showing uh, a different element here. So we've got hours of work. So really it's the combination when we're talking about uh, adding resources and calculating costs and all of those things, we've got hours. Now you remember on the resource sheet, if I go back to the resource sheet, uh, we uh, assign $50 an hour. So we've basically got a work rate of $50 an hour. So if I go back for labors, if I go back, it says 16 hours. Well, what if I wanted them to work 
18 hours, watch what happens when I go to 18 hours, it changes this to two and a quarter days. So it changes this to two and a quarter days. The reality is though, you might want it to only have been two days. Maybe they're gonna work two nine hour days, right? So for those two days, they're gonna work nine hour days. Now you notice that when I, when I um, change that, um, there's this little exclamation point that appears and it's a warning and it'll it'll just flag there when you've just made that change because it's telling you it's giving you an opportunity it says click to set how the duration is changed as a result of the change in work so if i pull that down it gives me a choice increase the duration but keep the hours resources work per day the same or increase the hours resources work per day, but keep the same duration. So in this case, what I wanna do is increase the hours resource work per day, but keep the same duration. So I don't want to have it go to two and a quarter days, extend my project. This one's not on the critical path, as you can see, uh, but some cases it might be, and plus it's playing around uh, with um, these ones, it's moving partially into the next day. So what I'd rather have is increase the hours and I'm gonna click there and it makes that 18 hours and two days. And so if I go back to my um, laborers, it's done a calculation of 113%. So that means basically if an eight hour day is 100%, that adding um, two hours to it is adding 0.125 and then they round it so it's 0.13 right 0.125 that's a quarter of a day that's the way that it's um, calculating it so point, uh, 113% is $900 what that's doing essentially is taking those 18 hours and multiplying it by the $50 an hour that we looked at in the resource sheet. So all of this is going on in behind when you add, uh, when you add cost to Microsoft uh, Project. What I often say to my students uh, at the college when I'm uh, teaching this too is, sometimes it's better, not even in the middle of a project, to test out how the program is behaving. So like at the bottom of the screen or in a blank project, you know, you could type in an activity and you could say uh, framing as an example. And you could say, uh, you could say that you want to put framing down as 10 hour, 10 days and see how this is going to behave. Right now it's got no resource assigned to it. So then we could assign the resource laborers and essentially we've got 10 days at 80 hours and we could see how if we double click on this we could um, check this out and we could see how under the task information box you see it says fixed units right and if we go fixed units fixed duration or fixed work uh, under fixed work it's got uh, a check bar a check mark and so that's really saying what that's saying is that's not going to move right that's not going to move that's fixed now if if i click ok here if i actually then double this up so that we have two labors as we said um, you notice that it went to half as much right so basically 80 hours and it went to the five days that we discussed because we doubled it so it should take half as long if we didn't want it to really do that, what we could have done is if we go back and now it's at 10 days, we could have double clicked on this. Another way of approach on this is we could say uh, fixed work. No, we want to have this fixed duration, right? And so we want to make sure that this is a fixed duration and we're going to click OK. We're going to have the effort driven off. We're going to click OK. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double this. And you see how it, it doubled the hours, but it the day stayed the same. So it doubled the hours, the day stayed the same. It had fixed um, duration, so that would not move. So there are ways by uh, double clicking, going to the advanced tab 
and going into the settings and making sure that that's shut off for that particular item that you can actually double the hours or do whatever you want to the hours without changing the days. So that's another way that you can do it. The one is that you've changed and it gives you the warning over there and you could go in and you could adjust it. The other is that you could actually go in and see that. Now you can see how we have now 160 hours and we've got a cost of $8,000. So we've doubled the, doubled the actual number of laborers and uh, they're gonna be, it's not shortened the duration, so of course it doubled the cost. And if you wanna run the numbers for that again, you just go 160, you'd multiply that by uh, 50, uh, that would give you, well, let's see if we can do this uh, on the fly. You've got 50, 50 times 160, that's gonna give you $8,000. And that's where it's coming from. So that's the relationship between work duration and units and then when you've added a cost per hour to the units they work together to give you the cost so it's understanding how these interact and where your costs come from so if you're in construction as an example or you're in IT you you would understand how these things interconnect as far as you know if I'm having somebody work 12 hour days there's an extra cost to that uh, than if they're working eight hour days. And if I don't want the project to take longer because duration is really where it's gonna drive the project to taking um, longer, then that typically is gonna mean either adding more resources during that time period or having individuals work longer hours during specific days. So that's that uh, relationship between effort-driven scheduling, units, hours, duration, and of course, cost. Hopefully that gives you a quick lead in. If uh, you enjoyed this, click the subscribe icon and you can also uh, look at the playlist on MS Project and you can look forward on previous ones uh, right from the very beginning of just how you set things up uh, to more advanced such as tracking and inserting changes, etc. So I'm Tom Stevenson wishing you a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.